He says, in Bogle uh, on mutual funds, you explain why international investing has risks and state that perhaps investors should keep their money in U.S. stocks. It concerns me that virtually no other passive investing author is worried about the same risk that you identify. Why do you think these risks are ignored and international investing is being touted as crucial for maximum diversity? What is behind this? <laughs> well... First, I have never given a damn about what anybody else thinks. We knew that, John. <laughs> <laughs> and I pay attention, and I listen to the arguments. And that may be a little strong form of my feeling. But uh, they're entitled to their opinion, and it may be right. And as this article in, in, that I just cited mentions, and then this is true, I say this uh, whenever I write about it. Uh, the, the, when I first said this, you don't need any international, any non-U.S. stocks, it was 1994 in my first book. I was on the record. You don't need them. If, you, if you're going to have them because of these extra risks, stop at 20%, no matter what the market weight is. And so in the next 20 years, 25 years almost, in the, the non-U.S. are up about, let me say, 300%, and the U.S. is up 800%. So this is a brilliant prognostication. I hear a little applause there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yet uh, I quickly acknowledge the fact that the U.S. has done so well for so long in this relative sense may, mean, may easily mean that we'll have some reversion to the mean. I always talk about that. And it could mean that. One doesn't really know. So to, you know, just take all of me. Don't, don't, don't take my word for it. Take to, you know, make your own decisions. But I, I do think uh, that you don't want to get carried away with, with uh, unknown risks. And then, then I use this other example. And they talk about this. And, they, and that is... When you talk about non-U.S., think about what non-U.S. means. Don't just take it as, as for granted. The largest non-U.S. market is the United Kingdom. The second is Japan, and the third is France. Now, the U.K., with Brexit and all, is not a particularly productive economy. I would bet that our GDP would grow faster than theirs in the next 25 years. Japan, very structured society, population shrinking, or aging population, uh, tsunamis every few years, <laughs> uh, doesn't seem to me to be a, a place that will do better than the U.S. And France, my God, they don't go to work there. They're having a big yeah. fight again. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> if you're French, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they have, they, they have very strong labor protections in France, there's no question about this. And the idea of the new... Macron, I guess, administration is to reduce those protections and have a more competitive framework. And labor is revolting. Uh, you know, they, they have a, I think it's a 35-hour maximum week or something like that. And uh, thank God I work 35 hours and a half a week. <laughs> Not now, but I used to. <laughs> <laughs>